the whole art of teaching, the whole practice of teaching is experimental. And when it stops being experimental, when it stops being experimental, that's when one needs to give up. When you can't be inventive, creative, and realize, hey, this may have worked 15 years ago, and the same letter I wrote 15 years ago, I'm too lazy to uh, write a new one on it. It just isn't working anymore. When you lose that kind of experiment of character with your own product, that is your lectures, your writings, the things you're disseminating, it's probably time to rethink whether this is something you should be continuing. If being a teacher and teaching as a performance, that is what I do, if being and doing are in harmony, then it's also what I'm writing it has to be an element of that as well. Scholarship is not divorced from teaching. And it's a sad state when, our, when teachers stop becoming scholars, that is, interested in scholarship, interested in text, interested in new knowledge, interested in upgrading their own educational uh, file cabinet of knowledge, if you will. Uh, when scholarship is not driving what one teaches, it's probably time to rethink some things. If you have not covered up time to play, if you're not covered up time to uh, enjoy your families, if you're not covered up time to uh, walk the dogs, not taking time for the everyday ordinary uh, world in which we live in and all your world is is uh, surrounded by this one set of one set of habits that are part of your life namely a teaching learning relationship and, and, and world if you have not experienced laughter if you don't do these ordinary everything things that are expected of you it affects your teaching it makes you mean it makes you uh, controlling it makes you having to be always right. It makes you bore, boring. And it makes learning boring. So, no, I think you're a better teacher because you can cut it off. Because you can say, I also, this is also part of my life. The everyday ordinary experiences of laughter, going to a movie. So, when I go home, I watch the judges, Judge Judy or the rest of them. But I'm, but I'm not trying to watch uh, something serious when I've been serious all day. And I want to play with my dog, and I want to go to But I think that's what we're trying to communicate as educators. Leading our students out into a richer, fuller, and fulfilling sense of the self in the world, participating in the world, enjoying the world. And in the end, that's really what I want to accomplish. When we could say, uh, someone could say, because of this class, I have come to enjoy my world, the world around me, better, easier, and flourishing. That, to me, is the goal of what I want to achieve. And I can't do that when teaching becomes the totality of all that I am and all that I expect of my students. I want them to live in a world happily as ordinary people, as much as they can, with a higher sense of fulfillment because they've learned proportion, how to balance life. I think the greatest joy of my life was the joy of my grandmother, uh, who could see her, her baby, Dawn in Professor Regalia, as she says, that's my boy, because I am, as the African singing goes, I am because we are. My upbringing in Chicago, I carry with my siblings. I carry the burdens, but also the laughter. I carry the lessons learned. I carry the lessons uh, unlearned. I carry all the experience with me. And all the experience with me, that transform me. But they sustain me too. They sustain me in faith, but they sustain me in good times and in bad times. And so, uh, the old folks who were in that theological tradition, they would call it the communion of saints. The, who I am as a professor at Vanderbilt Divinity School, I'm that because of a communi communion of saints. Some are living and some are gone, but I'm always conscious that who I am and what I do as a teacher has to be honoring of that communion of saints because I'm here 
because they gave what they had to give to me and imparted that into me. And so, yeah, I, the, the sense of fulfillment that brings is that it's not just an individualized sense of, of achievement with the eye that teaches says, I did this. No, the eye that teaches, this eye that teaches is one that's been formed, shaped by a communion, community of saints. Some living, some gone, the lessons learned, and the lessons that stay in my heart, they continue to inspire me to be an educator, to be a teacher.